This is a Motorola Spectre unit, and let's open it up, see what's inside. Okay, so obviously they did a pretty good job of shielding everything in here. We see pretty much absolutely nothing. We can see the uh, power wire coming from the front connector here, going onto this PCB ground dismounted to this metal post right here. So let's take off uh, those two cans and let's see uh, what's inside. I don't know if you can read that, probably not, but this says contains technology uh, patented by Digital Voice Systems Inc. And that is the company that owns the uh, multiband excitation codec that is used for uh, a bunch of digital protocols like APCO 25. So most of the interesting stuff is going to happen in this module. Uh, this one doesn't tell us what, inside, what is inside, so let's pop it open and see. All right, I guess it was a little rough on that one. That's not supposed to happen. Normally when you pull on this, this module is supposed to come out as one, like so. And uh, since I pulled on it a little bit hard, uh, the shield came right off, but uh, okay, cool, so be it. So we have this little modular connector down here that mounts right here on the printed circuit board. Apparently a PCB pops right out, so very good. I'm gonna have a look at this board here in a moment. Okay, so nothing really spectacular in here. You see a TDA chip here, which is most likely some sort of uh, audio driver, and I haven't looked it up. Bunch of Motorola chips, and obviously this radio is a Motorola radio, so it's gonna be full of Motorola ICs. Motorola is big enough to make their own uh, A6 and other ICs, so that's what you're gonna be finding in here which also explains the big prices of Motorola radios, something that uh, law enforcement agencies note over here in the United States that Motorola radios cost a lot more than uh, competitive products. And Motorola is slick enough about implementing some, let's call them extras, into well-accepted standards so that law enforcement agencies get, I don't want to say tricked, but they get locked into Motorola products only and uh, shoot themselves in the foot. Like the Little Rock Police Department, for instance, bought uh, what's called ADP encryption, which is Motorola proprietary. And uh, with that, they can only buy Motorola radios. Uh, anyway, that was their decision, not mine. All right, this from the top, let's see, we have a Cable going in here, and that coax comes out of there. And just by the style here, I want to guess this is some sort of filter board. And yep, oops, that connector popped right out of there. That's soldered on. We can pop this one out here. Yep, all right. Do not feel the just adjustment voids warranty. Okay, cool, very interesting. A couple of inductors, capacitors on there. I wonder if that's also some sort of switch, receive, transmit switch. I don't know. I don't recognize those parts on here. Obviously, surface mount parts. Wouldn't be too surprised if there's some uh, PIN diode in here. And there's some sort of switching, receive, transmit switch or something like that incorporated in here. But uh, obviously, there's a bunch of inductors, adjustable inductors. Let me see if I can get this label off stuck on there in a very unfortunate way. It's very sticky too. All right, nope, doesn't want to come off, but I guess you can see that uh, there's a bunch of inductors here and a bunch of stuff in the casing. All right, that's not how it was in there, but who cares? All right, let's have a closer look at that, uh, what I assume to be the uh, vocoder board. Let's move this aside. Alright, that's the board, and like I said, let's zoom in a little bit. Normally it sticks in this case that I kind of tore up right from the start. And, uh, let's look at the orientation here. Okay, 
is uh, chips are of course all in a different orientation. All right, let's hold it this way around. I hope you can read the uh, imprints of all the chips on here. So obviously this is some sort of Motorola DSP, digital signal processor, a little bit of memory here. And uh, this is a uh, 68 HC uh, 11 from Motorola. I think now Freescale makes this chip. It's an 8-bit uh, complex instruction set microcontroller. It's actually uh, not too uncommonly used, 68 HC 11. Again, Freescale, I think, still makes it. Freescale took over the production from uh, Motorola. I guess they bought the chip. God knows what they did. Uh, here's some RAM from Epson. And uh, this is pretty standard here, an, an Atmel EEPROM. And uh, looking at the lines up here, you see the, the lines up here, it's probably data and address. And just looking at it and seeing that it goes directly into the RAM, I want to guess that at startup, uh, the uh, microcontroller or whatever other clock source clocks the EEPROM data into the RAM and fills it at least partially with data and at shutdown some RAM data gets transferred back into the EEPROM and obviously an EEPROM has a very limited amount of read write not read cycles but write cycles so you can't write to it a lot it will break and especially if, if your chip is a little bit older and I assume this radio is probably 10 years old a oh, little bit less maybe I don't know, I don't see any date codes. Well, they're on there, but I'm not looking close enough. You probably have a better view on that than I do because the camera zoomed in so well. Anyway, so that's probably what's happening here. Looks very nice. Let's flip it over, see what we got here. Okay, so uh, we see another chip there, and it's really unfortunate. You guys can see this much better than I can. See if the camera will zoom in on that. Nope, it won't. Great. There we go. All right, so we got some sort of other microcontroller i'm unfamiliar with that model number but obviously we got a clock source up here uh, so this will probably be different kind of microcontroller this here will be ram yep definitely ram and more memory lots and lots of memory on here i assume that on this chip is on this board is probably where the most math and processing happens Let's see if this comes off yeah yeah, it does. Okay, another connector there. Intel chip. Very interesting. I'll have to look at what that is later. CVB90. I should probably know that, but I don't. I apologize. Well, I'll look it up later. And that's the module I just pulled up. No idea what that is. Guess we're going to have to have a look inside. I popped the sucker open, and it seems like there's one more microcontroller in there. And uh, I'm not sure what this is. It looks like another ASIC here from micro from uh, Motorola. Let's see if that comes off. One or two ASICs. That doesn't want to come off. See, the thing is, those those stickers are so old that the glue, of course, sticks very well. I could get out some solvent, but I don't want to spend too much time on this board here. There's so much more to see inside the radio. Come on, autofocus. Don't leave me hanging. All right, there we go. Interesting. Of course, I've never heard of those chips either. Probably some sort of Motorola A6 also. Again, we'll look it up later. Those radios, of course, like I said, initially can encrypt. And since encryption is an option, I want to bet that this right here is probably an AES or DES encryption module. I know this radio does support encryption, so somewhere in here in our parts there is going to be uh, a uh, module that's going to be responsible for that and I want to bet since this is undoubtedly the vocoder module this here is the vocoder board uh, no doubt this is where all the math happens this is when most important processing for the radio happens so more than likely this is going to be the uh, the encryption module and uh, on a side note Little Rock Police sent me a mail. I don't know if I was supposed to be impressed by that, but when I talked about these radios, they pointed out that they believe that in the state of Arkansas, it's uh, illegal for me to 
own a radio with encryption or more particular decryption capability. So again, uh, Little Rock Police, I will certainly provide you with a link to this video. This right here, I assume to be the uh, encryption slash decryption module. Yes, this radio does have encryption and decryption capabilities. And if you still believe that it's illegal for me to have, then you may want to talk to the FBI and ask them why in the world they sold this radio to me. All right, let's move on and uh, take a look at the other side of the radio. All right, more shielding. Uh, who would have thought? Hmm. All right, let's see what's under here. Well, that thing is certainly in there tight. All right, we're gonna have to try that with a screwdriver. Okay, that came off, there you go. All right, so I wanna say this board is apparent. Now this is the board that we plugged into from the other side with that filter board, which is probably not just a filter, but like I said, the uh, um, receive and transmit switch. Let's zoom in here and uh, reposition it a little bit. So quite obviously here we have a, uh, an oscillator of some sort, probably temperature compensated, uh, I would assume. And uh, some sort of microcontroller. Then down here, there's another frequency generating part. And I'm just guessing what the K style is probably going to be the VCO. So uh, this right here, my best guess would be that that is going to be the uh, frequency generation and uh, excitation state. So uh, stage. So this is where all the frequency generation happens. And uh, again, I'm just guessing. So one side is going to be Something in here is going to deal with the receive and something's going to receive with the uh, deal with the transmit side. I don't know, but all I know right here is the frequency generation. Something happens right here. Uh, we won't know uh, if it also contains the receive part until we've opened the other cans here and have a closer look. So let's open all that up. Okay, so correction, apparently the board that we plugged in from the other side is this board right here. Obviously the uh, connector that we saw from the other side is right up here. Here's another connector right here going into the uh, final stage. So this looks very interesting. That is a very neat looking design. So this interface is right here into this other frequency generation board that we had. It's very interesting. It looks very nice, very neat. You can tell that uh, apparently it looks like it's some ceramic substrate right here, this, this white part. And they put a bunch of uh, surface mount parts on there. And just judging by the kind of traces, obviously there's a bunch of RF happening here. Those are going to be uh, fixed impedance. The transmission lines on here, uh, very nice. It's really nice stuff to see. And that's one thing I have to say for Motorola. They usually do a very good quality job designing these kind of things. If you take Motorola radios apart, they are usually rock solid. So like I said in the beginning, Motorola is good about locking customers into their products, but at the same time, they provide the quality you'd expect for that price. So. Anyway, yeah, not too much politics today. I had enough of that. So again, this is probably frequency generation right here. And uh, this most likely, this part here probably goes, you know, looking at it that way, this is probably what's, what's going on. So this is going to be the receive, obviously. Again, this wire goes on the other side to, uh, to that module that we looked at that I determined to be the receive transmit switch and some sort of filtering. It's probably an IF filter, uh, no input filter. Sorry, this is a VHF radio. So that fits just looking at the coils and uh, inductors. That's probably the VHF input filter. And this here is gonna be a receive stage of some sort. 
and also some uh, transmit frequency generation is going to happen there and uh, interpolated from there this is probably going to be your uh, signal generation your final transmit signal generation so this is where the modulation happens the uh, c4 fm generation and uh, that that's just my best guess but that's probably a very lucky guess I remember this wire right here was plugged into into this side and that's probably where no you know I don't know we were plugged in from the other side into this one too so this may double as um, modulator and demodulator. I could probably just look in the manual, but I don't have the manual. So again, we're just guessing, having fun, and looking at what's inside here. So spin it around and look at this. And that is obvious what that is. There's no doubt about this section in any way. This is the final amplifier. This is a 110 watt final amplifier stage for the VHF range. And this is probably the part that I am the most interested in. Me and some friends here locally are probably gonna try to play a little bit with those APCO 25 radios. I got seven of these and a couple of others. But uh, what I'm mostly interested in is taking this board out and getting it into a standalone solution. Or just remove the rest to keep the heat sink and everything. Maybe cut it in half, whatever and uh, turn this into a 110 watt amplifier for amateur radio purposes. Uh, C4FM doesn't really uh, require much linearity, so the linear properties of this is probably piss poor, but oh well. So it'll still be good for FM communications. We'll have a look at that. That's probably the input, probably pre-drivers right here and final stage right here, and the output goes out can't see that I apologize goes out right here to the uh, front antenna switch uh, connector man it's late it's uh, past three it's uh, 325 so I apologize if I sound a little bit tired because I actually am but I promised myself I would get this uh, quick teardown done today and um, that's pretty much it so many things in here now all the Motorola parts make it difficult to decipher what the things really are and what they are not but it was still interesting. One more thing, whenever I get the time, I will probably try to uh, read this EEPROM here and see what data it contains. It might potentially be interesting or may not be. The FBI promised that this radio was wiped clean, but I don't know how it actually cleans itself and resets itself, so who knows what kind of information may be left on here. It may be inter potentially interesting to look at, but like I said, I need to find the time for that. I uh, hope I do at some point. And uh, this encryption module, probably, I don't know, I don't think there's much room for reverse engineering at all because this is going to be mostly Motorola proprietary. I mean, those chips are most definitely going to be. And uh, so there's probably not much you can do with it. Uh, however, it would be interesting to actually spy on these ports and see what data runs in and what data runs out. And so even though I may not be able to reverse engineer the module, it would be most definitely interesting to see if I can get this module to uh, encrypt and decrypt data that I can feed it. Uh, I assume this module is going to be pretty much standalone and just input-output system. You, you put data in and it encrypts it out and vice versa that there may be... I don't know if this radio is capable of multi-key environments. Uh, newer radios can use multiple keys for multiple talk groups. Um, I don't I don't think I don't know if this radio can I'll have to look it up so there may be potentially some way of selecting the right encryption key and um, all that sort of stuff but again that's just supposed to be a little overview of what's inside those radios so again I hope you enjoyed it and if you did give it a big thumbs up and share it with the world and I'll see you next time